I saw you standing there the first time that I laid my eyes on you. I couldn't get you out of all the thoughts I had. And now the end is near, and I just couldn't seem to get it right. I guess it's time to go. Welcome to another episode of the Coast Boys Podcast. I'm Gabe. I'm here with Izzy and Udi. How you guys doing? Good. How are you guys? We're good, man. We're good. Udi, thank you so much, man, for agreeing to do this with us. Uh, you were on the original list. Yeah. Yeah. So when the we first OG started, list. yeah, when we first started, we had a list of like twelve or fifteen people that we wanted on here, and you were one of them. Cool. It means a lot. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. Honestly, <laughs> it's yeah. sick, bro. It's sick. We haven't seen you in, in a long time. In a long a time. It's been some years. A long time. Yeah. We were talking about it a little bit earlier, but obviously trying to catch up and stuff but it's been a long long time it's i think it's while. been at least five years years yeah it's yeah, been years, years now you yeah. think about it yeah so for those that don't know why don't you just explain a little bit about yourself uh yeah my name is udi um grew up in fort bragg i was born in santa barbara though um don't have much memory there about three or four years old moved over to fort bragg grew up here my whole life played so- high school soccer here went to the high school here all the public schools here obviously that's all we have really Mm -hmm. um then i went to school at san jose state where i graduated in four years played there for four years as well um and now i'm just living in the bay area kind of day by day trying to figure out life really trying to figure it out that's what we're all doing man (laughs) so we did this yeah Mm -hmm. uh so you mentioned soccer you Mm -hmm. played at san jose state yeah um, why don't you talk about that? Like the beginning, how you, you got to San Jose, why you chose San Jose, but Yeah, basically um, just like the childhood and growing up. When it comes to the childhood, it was, soccer was just what I did, right? It was, what are you doing today? Let's go shoot. Let's go play. Let's go run around, whatever it was. Um, it usually involved soccer. Mm-hmm. Um, so when it comes to the childhood part of it, I wouldn't say it was too structured. It was just, let's go and, and ball really. Um, as I was growing up, I kind of got taken under the wing by uh, that Soliaco group, that David uh, Gonzalez, yeah. Franny. Um, I know, shout out Agustin. Yeah, shout out to Agustin. <laughs> yeah, <I did>. <laughs> great guys, great guys. Yeah, uh, I, what I, age? I love those guys, yeah. What age was that? Um, yeah, so start talking about Agustin. Um, I was probably about 12. You were young, I remember I, that. I was, I was very young, yeah. I was, yeah. I was about 12. Um, I'm not sure how old they were, to be honest. And yeah, and for uh, those who don't know, Zodiaco is like a, a men's league. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, an older yeah. men's league. So you're playing with guys that are, you know, 30s. Oh, yeah, gr- grown men. Yeah, yeah and grown. so he's 12 years old starting off. Yeah, so at first it started by, um, I was just on the field. Like I said, I was playing with some friends um, my age, or relatively my age. Um, and then Zodiaco would just come out to practice. Uh, little by little, they would kind of just say, you guys want to jump in? We need some players. Um, and we would just jump in. And I, I thought nothing of it. Um, as time passed, they started kind of inviting me more and more. Um, come practice with us. They used to get the high school gym a lot. I don't, I don't know how or how they do that. Yeah, I don't know. But we used to have so we could practice in there sometimes. Like we used to do some futsal, and uh, they made it pretty clear at the beginning that I could play, and and they kind of limited it to that. Mm-hmm. They, they were kind of like, "You're young, but we'll kind of take care of you." Um, so then I started kind of playing with them more and more. Uh, and then Agustin, which is the the, the OG, right, the, the main guy, mm-hmm. he um, he invited me full time to play with him. And he said, what do you think of men's league? Like, are you interested? And I would say I was no older than 13. And my parents, I talked to them. I was like, dude, I'm having so much fun playing with them. Uh, can I can I play? I, I want to just play. I'm so over whatever it is that I'm yeah. doing. Um and their reaction, no, no, yeah. it's just like, <laughs> dangerous. like yeah, like, <laughs> there's, there's no chance. Yeah. Like, is it because it was too dangerous? Because they said they were gonna rough you around and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And mm. I mean, I, I wasn't the biggest kid, right? Like, I was, yeah. I was short, I was skinny, I was small. Like, they, they were definitely concerned about that. Um, my dad, being obviously Mexican and in the culture, and soccer being a huge part of the culture, I think he understands what Mexican league soccer entitles, right? Sometimes it's. Unfortunately, it's more than soccer, right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's just like, who's stronger? Who yeah. who hits harder? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so their first reaction was no way, like no chance. Um, and I kept practicing with them. David, um, he's the one that mainly comes to mind. David Gonzalez and then um, Agustin. They they came to my house, 
and we like had a conversation. We sat down. Dude, they're recruiting that. No, no, yeah, bro. No, yeah, it was, it was pretty. <laughs> we'll pay him this much. <laughs> like, <"That was laughs> like, yeah, you'll never have to play Avitraje, right? The five dollars. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, yeah. So then they came. Um, we had a conversation with my parents. I was seeing David. We'll take care of him. Um, we'll give him rides. We'll pick him up. Um, just all that, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry. And for one reason or another, my parents gave in. Um, I started playing with them when I was 13. And the rest was history. <laughs> the rest was history, right? Um, yeah. So then it was, I just played with them my whole, my whole childhood, really, 13 yeah. to 18. Mm -hmm. Um, we were in second division when I started. One of my first years, um, we won penalty shootout and we went to the first. Um, we won, I believe, two more times the first division when I was there. Um, so, I mean, in five, six years, won two or three championships. So, that was fun. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. And it's all I really knew, right? It was it was what was here. It was the only soccer available, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I kind of embraced it and I went all out with it. Dude, that's the thing about Menzig is is obviously when you you know because you moved on to play, uh, when you when you go on you see people playing like back home and you're like well, I mean it's it's just men's league you know you, mm -hmm. you, you yeah. can't really do much with it but at the same time we talked about it with Lloyd is that a lot of people this is all they have yeah you know and there's so much pride and you can see that like you say sometimes emotions get the best of people over there it's a lot of proud Mexican oh, men you know and uh, the reason for that is that this is the only day of the week that they get to play yeah you know it means a lot to them and I've been a part of like teams that are super competitive like that like mm -hmm. people our age and it's just fun. Yeah. You know, it's fun. It's yeah. enjoyable. Like, we sound like when we talk about it, we sound like a bunch of fools <laughs> that peaked in high school, yeah. you know, like, hey, back in my day, you know, yeah. but, but it's a lot of fun, you know, and especially when you play like with David, with people yeah. you knew growing up, you know, mm -hmm. like you, it's fun. you, yeah, you spend all these memories yeah. with them. The times that we played with Atletico, like towards the back end of it, I think you guys started playing there too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So we didn't, we didn't I played play. with Gabe. So yeah. Cool. Yeah. I played one or two uh, yeah, years. Yeah. One or two you. years. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think you were there yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I think I, my first year is either like your last year or because okay. I remember when I joined, it was like me, Alan, Junior. Yeah, I didn't play with him. I was, Junior was already there. Really? Okay, yeah. so I, I think I, I joined late. Um, yeah. But after that, okay, so that's that's men's league. Would yeah. you say that's kind of like where you got your your foundation, or um, what did that teach you? I should say, I should ask. The physical part of it. Physical. Yeah, the physical part of it for sure. Um, I. I got a little kind of carried away at the beginning, um, but I think that's the way you learn, right? I think um, my game and playing with a lot of kids my age growing up, um, I took advantage of that. I just felt like I was more skillful than them, right? So I can beat them, I can score. Um, and I had that same mentality when I started at 13 in Soyaco. Like, this guy's a 30-year-old man that is one-on-one -on -one defending i'm gonna take him on like yeah. mm -hmm. th that that didn't really phase me but then well when you get your first few hits in in the men's league and and you realize like these are men hitting me now not yeah. not um kids my age it kind of like humbles you and go like okay like what could i do like how can i evolve my game to to still be effective um and not absolutely get killed out here right yeah um so i had to learn that through the first few years and Honestly, I think it was hard for the whole team. Um, and the reason why I say that is because they felt the pressure of protecting me. And whether they s ever said it out loud or not, um, I think it was pretty obvious. And if I got tackled or slid tackled in a game, it was a fight. Yeah. <laughs> like, like it was a fight. And, yeah. and I was just like, dang, like, like I'm okay. Like, you know uh -huh. what I mean? But it would be to the point where like I'd get hit. And you just start hearing our whole team like, yeah. dude, come on, he's 13. Like, come yeah. on. And then in my head, I'm just like, like come dude, on, guys. I'm 13. No. Come on. I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. I'm a man. And, and then and then like it would just keep piling on, piling on, right? And then it, it was there were some clear ones where it was just I would get completely from behind two feet and then a brawl, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that was hard on the team. But then again, for me, my parents going to every game was, dude, like, get rid of the ball. Like, I know you can beat them. But that's not the game here. Like, you know what I mean? The game here is let's play. Let's try to score and help your team. But mm -hmm. you can't do it on your own, right? And then that's kind of started shifting my mentality and kind of like, okay, um, let's play smart, right? Let's 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 use a team. Let's, let's not just go all out. But yeah. 
so that was a learning experience and that's what i took from that for sure yeah. were your parents always supportive and always going to your games and stuff like that yeah dude up? um that for sure like i don't think they missed a the game and and what i mean yeah. like from when i was four years old at middle school rec to soliaco to high school dude they were they were there that's awesome yeah. what did, did, your, dad, dad did your dad play yeah it was a bad ass uh he played he played growing up in mexico and stuff um i don't know how good he was right yeah. I, I i don't i mean we played a few times um here in the men's league um remember where it was it wasn't soliaco it was like a fort bragg one where it was like carpinteros versus uh that was, that was before my time no, no like a little kid league no, it was a men's league, no, but it was like a four brag league. Mm. Yeah, so it was actually pretty sick. So it was a, uh, yeah, they had like the team of the fishermen. Like so it was just four brag. Yeah, just four brag. Oh, what the hell? And uh, huh. my my dad played in that. Mm -hmm. He was in the team with the the pintores or something like that. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 was it was super lit. cool. Like you know, it was like a little fort brag. Like soccer. was it like elevens? Yeah, elevens. Oh shit! Dang. Um, and I played with him there. Like I would play with the pintores with uh. Gerardo, him, yeah. Gallo, like those guys. Um, so I, I've played with him here and there. Um, the other one was futsal indoor, mm -hmm. where we'd go to Mendocino and he, my dad would come every once in a while. I remember that. I remember yeah. he would jump in and play. He would jump in and, I mean, he, he was decent, yeah. right? He, he, was, he was okay. He, he held his own. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but him, like, doing it seriously growing up, I, I'm not aware and I, I don't think he did. Yeah. I should probably know that, but. Yeah, it's <laughs> conversation. You want to yeah, have yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I feel that. So growing up, would you say that you wanted to be steered towards the professional career of, of soccer, or what was your ambition as a kid? Yeah, as a kid, it was it was that. Yeah. It was um, I want to play pro, um, and that's it. Mm -hmm. um, there wasn't anything else really. It, it was never. Maybe this career would be cool. Maybe maybe this. It, it was always I'm I'm an, I'm a soccer player. No I'm, question I'm, about it. No. Yeah. Yeah, and honestly, that kind of goes into uh, a lot of decisions you make when choosing college and, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. the actions you take, like extracurricular activities. Yeah. It's all soccer. It's all, yeah, all everything. So soccer. growing up, would people ask you, like, what do you want to be? And you tell them, I want to go pro? I want to I want to play soccer. Yeah, I want to well, play pro. Like, uh, in high school, when teachers would ask, what, what college do you want to go to? It was never, I want to go to this school because of this program. Um, the one school I wanted to go to, um was uc santa barbara mm. so as i mentioned i was born there um we'd go once or twice a year to visit family um me being into soccer my family used to always take me to uc santa barbara games so when i was young i was going to these games watching them play cal poly ten thousand people people throwing tortillas on the on the field <laughs> i heard and, about that and i was just like this is I want to do this. Yeah, like, I, I, I want. I don't want to go to college for this program. This I want to go play UC Santa Barbara soccer. Um, so for the longest time, that was it, right? Um, teachers, where, what do you want to do? UC Santa Barbara soccer. <laughs> um, Did you ever get backlash from them, or like get smarky comments back? From no, them or anything? Uh, no, not really. Honestly, credit to them, right? Um, yeah. I I think it started since I started young in that men's league and then high school and close riptide and everything, um, I feel like people started kind of knowing me as like, that's a soccer guy. Mm -hmm. um, so when people would talk about it at school or class or stuff like that, I think even the teachers kind of knew like he, he wants to do soccer. He's so, all in. Yeah. So I think honestly, most of my life, like I feel like it's been soccer. Do you feel like, so for those that don't know, I will say that like you were the soccer guy, you were the man, like mm -hmm. you were the best player in every team you played for on uh, in Fort Bragg. Did that ever come with any pressure to make it? Like if you don't make it, it's almost like a failure. Yeah, and I didn't feel that pressure until I left, because hmm. me being in this environment in this community for eighteen years, um, I I was like, okay, I'm I'm the soccer guy. I'm gonna I'm gonna play soccer forever, right? That that's my calling. Um, I have the whole community on my back. Like, there's no way I don't make it, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then when you get out of the community and then, like, reality hits, right? It's kind of just, okay, I was I was good for a small town in the middle of nowhere. So yeah. in the middle of nowhere. So what does that mean now, right? So in a matter of a day, right, a matter of realizing it and on the spot, it came from support to I'm going to, 
put Fort Bragg on the map to like, shit, I got the pressure of Fort Bragg. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like I got the pressure of a whole town. Um, so I did feel that at the beginning and I felt it more every time I came back. Right. So the longer I was out there playing, every time it kind of got harder. Right. Cause it was, I'd come back for a few days, anyone I ran into, right. I could be at the gym. I could be on the store. Dude, like you playing pro yet? Like you made it? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, no, not, not yet. Like uh-huh. I'm trying not yet. And like, dude, you're going to make it for sure. Like I already know, like, give me, like, I don't know, stuff like that. Yeah. So and then, they, their intention is pure. Yeah. You 100%. Know, they, they mean, they mean well. it in a, in a 100%. good way, but it, it, I think it just hurts you like in your insecurities, you know? No, like, not that's there. exactly what you're yeah. insecure about. Yeah, for sure. And it's like, it's a selfish thing to be insecure about almost. Cause it's like, yeah. I'm insecure about you supporting me. Like that sounds so bad, you know? But then it's like, if this is really what I want, if this is what I'm working towards, like why, why do I feel so much pressure? Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and that, yeah, I mean, I think it did have a lot to do with how, the community was behind it and stuff like that. But as always, I mean, I appreciated it. All the support and all those comments and everything like kind of kept my confidence up, which as a player you need. Yeah. Right. So it, it goes with its pros and cons. I feel that. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to get deeper into that. But before we do, I want to ask you about high school. Because mm-hmm. on the way here, we're talking about that. You're, from what I remember in high school, you would be practicing for the school team during season. Mm-hmm. And then you would be training for San Jose. Uh, yeah. the academy mm-hmm. so how did that even happen how did those connections start who helped you how did um, you get there like when did you make that transition from just like a, a local town kid to when you actually got that that real exposure to, yeah. the, to the next level um when i was in high school my first like two years excuse me mm-hmm. um my first like two years um i didn't follow it too much but I guess like the whole max prep thing, right? The whole like high school soccer thing. It's like the big. I yeah, it was that. pretty big with recruiting. Um, and I honestly, to this day, I don't know who entered stats, who did whatever. Um, but I think I was ranked pretty decently on max prep when I was in high school. Um, and coming out of Fort Bragg, like that was kind of cool, right? I mean, I was kind of like on some rankings and stuff. Um, so that's kind of where it started kind of getting a little bit of exposure. Um, and then I met Jeremiah, right? Um, I saw the episode you guys have him. That was awesome. Um, so much credit to Jeremiah. Um, he saw me at Soliaco, I think. And he just, dude, I want to help you. That was it. Like nothing, you don't need to do anything. Just play and I want to help you. And you didn't even know this guy before. He just didn't know him. To- didn't know him. What was your first reaction when he said that? Uh, I mean, it caught me off guard at first, right? Yeah. And then you obviously don't want to close a door that you don't really know what it is yet. So I was like, dude, like I'm down, like let's do whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. And the first thing he offered me was kind of like, I, I, I don't know how he did it or his connections, but he said, I have some friends that work at the Quakes Academy. Um, I don't want you to go to just say like, I'm going to make the Quakes Academy and move to San Jose or whatever. Um, I want you to get exposure and just kind of see where you are with them. And that goes to what we were talking about, the community thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm good for here. How do I compare to, I mean, arguably some of the better players in the Bay Area, right? Mm-hmm. Top academy um, for a professional team. So I started going to their academies. Um, and that's in Danville. It's far. Dude, far. How, How, you get know? How long is it, the drive? Too long. Like, <laughs> I would say like three, four hours. Four hours, yeah. Yeah. And my schedule for a while, a lot of people don't know this that I went to high school with, um, is I would go to school. I think we'd get out at what, 3 15, 3, three, there, three o'clock. o'clock. Yeah. Jeremiah would be in his car in front of the office um, waiting for me. And I wouldn't go home. I, I literally, from six period, I would get in his car and we'd drive four hours to Danville. Um, practice would start at like, probably seven thirty eight. I would practice with the academy teams for like two hours dude I mean I'd be getting home at 3 a.m and next morning at eight I was I was at school um Damn. yeah and, and we did that <laughs> for what felt like probably too long right mm-hmm. we, we, were, we were doing that for a while how many days it a was, week it, it would only be like one day a week okay um but that was during it, season two 
yeah, it was like high school during, it was like during everything, right? Yeah. It was like a normal day and then I had to, uh, eight hour round trip to, Jeez. and, and I mean, and just like, think about that idea. Like I'm going to play, like, this is a guy I barely met is driving eight hours just for me to get the opportunity. That speaks a lot about yeah, Jeremiah. Shout out to Jeremiah. For yeah. those that don't know him, Huge. that's exactly what you need to know. Yeah. Like he's, he's been awesome, dude. And I've always appreciated everything he's done for me. So you go um, over there and you see the talent and, and what? Yeah, yeah, what was that like? The first practice? Yeah, the what first, was it like? Was it a shock? Yeah, I mean, I just felt like an outsider, really. Like, um, not playing wise. It was just like, we showed up. These kids are in their San Jose Earthquakes, top gear, oh, best damn. shoes. Dude, I think I showed up with like... A four bag hat. Yeah, <laughs> like long socks, like those like... High, high, like Shin guards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think my socks went over my shin guards, like... That's like it, it was just bad and then skill wise was skill it? wise I, I thought I was okay um mm. I I actually felt like I did fine um I want to say I was young enough to be U15s um by the end of it I was practicing with the U17s okay um so the level was was okay um I still remember the coaches it was a uh, Wando's brother yeah. Wondolowski and uh coach White so I had them um and that's kind of how I started getting introduced to the earthquakes. Nothing came out of it. Um, if we really, really wanted to push, I think it could have um, to the point where drop out of Fort Bragg High School, um, move to San Jose, live with a family from the earthquakes, um, and join the academy. And the thing is, academies, they're free. So if you if you're good enough to make an academy, like they'll take you in. You're covered. Mm. Um, That's interesting. So that would have been like the only option, really. Um, and for one reason or another, it was kind of just like, like I got exposure. I know the teams. Um, do I want to right now? Is it the best time to me to just get up and leave? Right. Um, and I don't know if it was my decision or Jeremiah's or my family's, but at the end of the day, it just didn't happen. Right. Um, and then fast forward to me going to San Jose State. I know you asked why I went to San Jose State. So um, Tony Hernandez, uh, one of my best friends, like my brother growing up, um, we had plans to go to San Francisco State. <laughs> mm. we, 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 we were both kind of doing the, the free applications. The free yeah. State yeah. Yeah. I, remember that. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'll do it. Um, I'll see whatever gets me in, right? Whatever. Yeah, why not? Um, and... We get accepted both to San Francisco. And our plan is, dude, let's go to San Francisco, get an apartment, we'll live together, like continue this friendship, right, in in, in San Francisco in college. Um, and then in one year, your brother can join us, right? Matthew will join us and we'll all be in San Francisco. And we had conversations about that f for a while. And then it was like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And I want to say almost like a week before like we had to make a decision. I just like look. It was San Francisco State or San Jose State, mm -hmm. and soccer just kept being in the back of my head. Like soccer, 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 and San Francisco's D two, and San Jose's D one, and that was ultimately the decision. Was it? Were those uh, the only two schools you got into? Uh, I got into a few others. Um, through my four years of high school, I actually was getting like recruited or at least asked about with the Zimmer brothers at Sonoma. Yeah. Um, uh, Holy Names. Um, shout out to uh, Jennifer Sanders too and Shell too. They helped me a lot with all that. Um, so I did get like smaller schools interested. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not really what I wanted. You right? wanted D1. Yeah, I wanted D1. Yeah. And and it was a, kind of a D1 or bust mentality. Yeah. Um, so I kind of was like, dude, Tony, like, sounds great living with you and all that, but I think I want to see where this soccer thing goes. Um, so I chose San Jose. I went by myself, didn't know anybody, didn't know anything. The first time I ever saw campus was my orientation. Like, I was just about like, to ask mm, if you like guys did no, Like, I was already committed. Jeez, like, yeah. I was already there. Um, but then again, it was never a thing about um, college, right? It was never like, I want to go to this college. It was always like, I want to play. I want to play soccer. Yeah. I want to play. So I didn't really care what the school was like. Mm -hmm. um, and then my whole first fall comes and 
I, I don't make the team. Oh, I didn't try out, actually. Yeah, I, so I, talk about that. Did you know when tryouts were? Did you go to the um, tryouts and all that? No, I didn't go to any tryouts. I was kind of just there training. Like, it was kind of weird now that I look back at it. Like, I was just a regular student, like, thinking I was going to make it. Um, my whole first fall, I didn't play. That's when their soccer season is. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was just kind of in the dorms, regular college life. Um, and then Jeremiah kind of hit me up again. And he said, Earthquakes are having an open tryout. So it's not for the academy team. This is for their pro team. Um, if you're interested, like, I'll, I'll sign you up. I'll meet you there in Danville. Uh, and we'll do this, you know? And I said, all right. Like, I've been training in the dorm, like, <laughs> running around the dorms and yeah. <laughs> upstairs. And I'm like, I'm, I'm ready. Let's go. So at this point, I was like, I was a young student. So I was 17 going on 18, I think. Um, and we went to open tryouts and, and again, completely just out of place. Like these people are trying out for a pro team. So there's professional players from overseas that want to come play in America. So there's 25 people in their prime, um, trying to just find a new pro team. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, there's college players that just played four years in Cal, UCLA, whatever, trying to make a pro team. Right. So the level was like. Like, what am I doing here? Like, mm-hmm. my last team was Soyaco. Like, you know what I mean? Um, and we played, dude. And I don't know the exact numbers, but I've seen it before because my mom collects all the newspaper ads, right? <laughs> um, and there was over 100 players there. And I made the top 20. Damn. So the conversation was so, let me cut you off during yeah. that tryout is, is it just games just small games. sided just games 11s games yeah and, uh, who decides what position you play does the coaches put you somewhere do um i think they they separated us by position and then depending on where you were they would make teams mm-hmm. and what position did you play for those uh, centerman. Who didn't know? center mid center mid yeah um and and yeah so i ended up doing well like i got called back i think two different times um and then the coaching staff of the Earthquakes, the their first team staff kind of comes up to me, starts kind of taking notes and what's your name? What's your GPA? What school do you go to? Um, where did you play club? <laughs> and then that's where it kind of gets awkward, right? It's like, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't play club. Yeah. He's like, what do you mean? He's like, uh, no, I didn't play club. I played a uh, high school. He's like, okay, you chose high school over club. I was like, no, like, that's all <laughs> I had. Club wasn't an option. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then... What was the other one? He said, oh, so you go to San Jose State, so you play for Coach Gary. And I was like, nope, <laughs> like don't do that either. Yeah. Um, he's like, isn't he the coach there? I was like, yeah, but I'm not on the team. Uh, and then he's like, wait, like you're coming to Earthquake's first team tryouts and you are you just don't play anything? <laughs> and I was like, no, like I'm just a student at San Jose State. Um, and then he told me something super cool and he was like, dude, you should not only be on a like division one team, like you're, you're a starter, you're a starter on a division one college team. And I was like, Oh, thank you. Like, dude, that must have felt yeah, so no, good. exactly. I was like, dude, that's sick. Like, I appreciate that. And then he's like, you know what? I'm going to give Gary a call and make sure you contact him and, and we'll get you a tryout. And I think NCAA is really picky about like just letting a random student just go to practice and try out i don't think they were doing that um but me just being not proactive about it i probably let like another two weeks go by Mm -hmm. still going to my regular routine the dorms whatever um and then one day i was just like dude i'm just gonna call him like i'm just gonna call the head coach at san jose state and i don't know how i think i emailed and got his number and very uninterested at first i was just like hey um i know you get these calls a lot I just want to let you know I'm a student here. I'm already enrolled. Um, I'm I'm trying to play. Like I'm just trying to get an opportunity. Did you mention the the earthquake trader? I didn't. So that's where I messed up. I was Why just. Why wouldn't I, you? I don't know. It was, it was just like I don't know. Booty, no. <laughs> yeah, right? uh, oh my goodness. <laughs> what not to do? When yeah, I'm like, yeah. Okay. Um, and then he was just uninterested, right? He was like, uh, like maybe we have an ID camp. Uh, I, you can't really come out to practice with us because it's against NC or something like that so and he just like, treated you like you were some other kid that yeah basically yeah, and yeah. I was like okay like maybe ID camp I'll see you there and then he was like last thing he's like oh what's your name so I can just have it down and I told him 
And then his attitude just changed. Spits his water out. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, that? Yeah. Yo, yo. <laughs> yeah. And then he just like, it just changed instantly. And he was like, oh, he's like, I've been waiting for you to call. Oh. And I was like, damn. I was like, dude, I must have had the wrong number. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, um, and then uh, he's like, come to the ID camp. He's like, you don't have to pay. Like, just come out. And I go to the ID camp. And for those who don't know, it's basically a tryout for San Jose State. So it's high school kids, kids that are already at San Jose State, kids that want to transfer from a JC, um, just people that want to play there. Mm -hmm. um, so he's like, just come, come and play. And I played for that day. And then Gary Sinclair, the head coach of San Jose State at that time, uh, he comes up to me after the first day and was like, hey, just um, come to my office real quick. I want to talk to you. And at this point, I was like, can I get cut before even making a team? Like, what, what is, like what's going to happen yeah. here? Um, and he gives me, <laughs> I'll never forget, he literally gives me a blank printer paper. Like, nothing on it. Uh -huh. Like, zero. A blank page. Blank page. No lines or anything. Like, it's literally just a, a print paper. And he goes, write your name, write your class schedule, and your GPA. And I wrote all that down. I hand it to him, and I still have no idea what's going on. And then that's when he's just like, uh, so we're going to use this information to update our website for the roster. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, you're, you're on the team, like you're on the roster. Yeah. And then I was like, just like that? And then, well, I didn't say that. but like, yeah. And then he's like, yeah, like you're on the roster, but it was spring at that time. So spring training is, there's games here and there, but it's, it's not you're preparing for fall. Yeah. Um, and he made that clear. He was like, you're on the spring roster. Like, that doesn't guarantee your spot for the fall. Mm -hmm. But your foot's in the door. You're going to train with us all spring. I got the training uh, plan that summer. Um, and then my sophomore year going into the fall, um, I came into preseason. And that's kind of like maybe a few days in, two, three days in. Uh, he pulled me aside again. And he said, hey, keep in mind preseason we have – a lot of kids in preseason. So the roster maybe holds 25 and you have about 35 to 40 players that are on the team, right? That right. Are, they still have to make cuts. So um, he pulls me aside like two, three days in and he just goes, hey, don't stress about it anymore. Like, don't feel nervous. Like, you, you made it. You're on the roster. And I guess that was officially when like, I'm on the team. Like, I'm about to play this first fall. And then from there, I played four years and... Uh, had a few coach changes and stuff like that, but the experiences were, were good. But before you joined the team, did you know anybody on the team? Did uh, you have any connections? No. no. Oh, yeah. Actually, I did. Um, Frankie, um, one, of, one of my good friends on the team. Um, I had communications class with him. Okay. I was in class with him, and he would uh, he would come in and, you know, San Jose State soccer gear and stuff, and I was like, dude, I'm... Like, we became friends, right? And I was like, dude, I'm trying to play. Like, I'm, I'm going to be on the team one day with you. Like, I was, like, giving him a hard time. Like, dude, I'm, come on. Like, I want to play. Like, tell coach. Tell coach. <laughs> um, and then when I'm getting my physical, when I make the team, Frankie walks in the training room. And he goes, you weren't joking. Like, <laughs> you're here. I was like, I told you. But, yeah, I mean, that's the only one I really knew. Yeah. Um, the rest, I mean, I met, obviously, through through that. What was that like? Like being on the outside looking in and then finally making it? Um, a relief, yeah. really. I mean, it's just constant pressure for, I'd say, I think the tryout, the ID camp was in March. And I didn't make it until probably August. Mm. So that's months of training to try to make the team, mm -hmm. right? So that's months of pressure, like, sh what if I don't make it, right? Um, and that's my thing. Since I was so focused with soccer, that was a question I had to ask. Like, what if I don't make it? Like, I, I don't want to just be here for four years without playing. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a conversation I had to have with myself a lot, where it's like, what's your backup plan? Like, do you transfer to San Francisco and just live life with Tony, right? Like in the dorms and stuff? Or, or do you try somewhere else or what? So it was just a lot of pressure for that time. Mm -hmm. And then obviously when you get the news, it, it's relief. What was your first season like? Um, good. I, I, I think I played the second most minutes out of everybody. Um, a lot of learning, um, 
basically learning soccer, right? It's hard to imagine that you play for your whole life and you know nothing about soccer. Mm-hmm. So what what's something new you learned or what's something that was different? Positioning, okay. uh, jobs, um, what's your duty on this play? What do you do on this? Who do you cover here? Uh, what do you do on this set piece? What do you do on this? Dude, uh, growing up here, it was go play, right? Just go kick play. the ball around. <laughs> go play. Um, so I had a very hard time with that, but it also helped me because I played a whole new position in college. So I played forward slash the 10, like attacking mid my whole life here. I was used to scoring goals, getting assists. Um, pretty early in my college career, they go, no, you're, you're going to play left back. What the And then I'm just like, defender? Like, yeah. how, how do I score from here, coach? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, like I'm, I want to score a goal. <clears throat> yeah. um, Did they tell you why? Do you think it's just because you're left-footed? I think it was, that's a big part of it. I was left-footed. Uh, well, I am left-footed. Yeah. Um, they wanted to try to play out and like, they sense. thought I could connect. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think the speed of the game, when I first started, in center mid, it was just too fast for me. It was just like, oh man, like I just got to get used to the speed. Mm. Um, so the game probably slows down at left back, right? Everything's in front of you. You can take the ball up, pick your pick your pass. Mm-hmm. Um, where in the midfield, it's, you know what I mean? 360 Dude, all around yeah, you. You, you have to make a decision. Scary, <laughs> yeah, and, and I got thrown in from Sunday league to, okay, you're, trying out as a center midfielder for a D1 college. Mm-hmm. So I think the pace, like just the speed of play was, was too much for me just to jump in. Yeah. Um. So I think it was good that I was a left back at the beginning. Were you happy with that decision or were you like... I think it was the best for me. Mm. I, I think when, it, when I look back at it, I think the coaches made the right choice. I think that's where I played the best and where I fit. Um. But as the longer I played and the more the game slowed down for me, Man, dude, I was yeah, antsy, I huh? was <laughs> wanting to play midfield so bad. Like, like, dude, please, like, please, like, come on, yeah, the I really want to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, and you thought you coach. were ready then? To yeah, play and that I thought position? I was. And we would play like small sided games at practice, like seven v seven or stuff like that. I would never play left back at practice. I would, I would be in the center because I'd, I'd want the ball. Like, I'd be involved. I'd try to shoot. I'd score. Um, so I was always like, dude, I want to do this in a game. Um. But now I basically play left back my, my whole my whole college. Um, one of my good friends, uh, Enrique, he ended up playing pro left back at Louisville. Um, he was a left back as well. So he did play left back for, I believe, a, like, I think we overlapped for like a year or two where he did play left back. It was weird. It was like a weird where like I'd play left back and he'd play left mid. And then there's times where like he played left back, I'd play left mid. Mm. Um, so that season was like, Okay, I'm getting higher Closer, up the field. Yeah. Colder. And uh, one of my first games at left mid was against St. Mary's. And um, some people from Fort Bragg were there randomly. Like, I was, it was super cool. Like, they were there supporting. It was like um, Elizabeth and Chava and all them. And, th- and they were there. Like, I was just playing. I think Juan and Jason showed up. And mm. I was just playing. And I looked aside and I was like, hey, my Damn, people. Sick. Yeah, so um, that was one of the first games I played left mid. Uh, and I scored a goal. It was my first college goal. Hell yeah. And then in my head, I was just like, this, this, this is, is a start. It. Like, this is a start. I'm going to start know. getting played. Next game, play left mid again. I score against Bakersfield. Dang, back-to-back games. Yeah, back-to-back games. And then I remember getting on the phone with my mom and stuff and was like, I'm not playing defense anymore. Two games in a row, I scored like... This is it. Looking up right now. Like, and then for one reason or another, I was a left back again. Um, but like I said, I mean, I think... I don't dislike left back. Like I, like I do enjoy playing there. Do you consider yourself a left back now? If someone asks, like, <laughs> what position do you play? You say left back. <laughs> probably. Yeah. Probably. Uh, that's uh, so funny. Like, I can't picture you. So yeah, I, like, I picture you as a center mid. <laughs> like, yeah. like, like logically, like yeah, okay, I'm a left back. But like, I still hold on to like, dude, I'm a center midfielder. Yeah, I feel that. And I think with my experience of both mm-hmm. left back and growing up playing center mid. If I would like try to do it all over again or like what is my best position now, I would probably try to be like like a six or an eight, like where I can be defensive still, but still be in the center of the field. Mm. So like wouldn't be as high as I was here, but I wouldn't be all the way in the back line either. I think it'd be somewhere in between. Yeah. 
I feel like the eights are the most <coughs> well-rounded players. Yeah. They're usually the most technically sound, I would say. Don't you know, know how much space I would cover, but yeah, I would definitely uh, I mean, try to move the ball. <laughs> tactically smart, yeah. you wouldn't have to cover a lot. Yeah, you know, exactly. Just don't run that much. Yeah. I think that's interesting because, like you say, when you first started, it was transitioning from Fort Bragg to San Jose State. I kind of had a similar experience, but mine, I feel like I had an easier route because I did go the Juco route and I did learn all that positioning at a lower level to where when you do jump into players that are just as good as you at that other level, at the higher level, mm -hmm. you know all the, the positioning, everything, you know, you kind of skip past that, uh, the training wheels, I would say. Yeah. So, I mean, that was just the point I wanted to make. But talk about the, the coach transition. You did mention that earlier. Yeah. So um, the guy that recruited me, the first guy was uh, Gary Sinclair. Uh, I think he was at the program for a long time. Um, very different styles in coaching. Um, when I first made the team, very athletic dominant, right? Very size dominant. Our team was huge, man. <laughs> like yeah. we had a uh, tall, strong, aggressive players. Um, to fast forward, my last three years, we got um, a different coaching staff that kind of was in between. Right. Um, it was a balance between both. Um, one of the coaches, assistant coach, was kind of still leaning towards that athletic um, player. And our head coach was more about, I want to play soccer, right? I want, I want to try to get soccer players here. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a balance that kind of helped me um, with the second coaching staff because it was, we're trying to play soccer now, right? We're getting soccer players that are trying to touch the ball. So the style fit me better. Um, but it's it's all learning, right? New system, new formation, um, new culture, yeah. everything. Um, so yeah, I got stuck in that transition for for a little bit, and it's a there's growing pains to it, right? When I got to my junior year, um, I'm trying to have a decision made, like what do I want to do with this soccer thing, right? What what's next? Um, and the team's kind of rebuilding, right? So it's kind of just like. Uh, it sucks. Yeah, yeah you're like, stuck in an awkward situation where it's like, I want the best team available right now for me, like in a selfish, you know, like selfishly, like let's make this I team the win. best because yeah. I want to win yeah. before I leave yeah. uh, to where it's like, you know what? It's my first year coaching or second year. Like I want to bring out of time to bring my own recruits in. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So Different mentality. Yeah, exactly. So it got kind of hard. And remember, I didn't get recruited by any of them. So being a walk on just that fact alone is kind of like like you have scholar guys that you've recruited from Europe or from top academies that you're obviously going to try to lean to to play them or, yeah. or do that because you're spending money on them right and I, I a lot of people don't know this but I, I didn't get money when I played like I, I was not on scholarship um so so that was tough right it was always like well who would we rather play, right? If they're at an evil playing ground, do we want to start this guy who has a track record and we paying money to come here or, or you know, just, just walk, walk on, on dispensable, the, right? Yeah. So, that must be some interesting tension between, like, the coaching staff and the players that were already there. Were there any kids that got cut when the new players came or the new coaches came in? Yeah, a lot. A lot of them got cut? A lot, cut? yeah, a lot. Um, it was, like, a, like I said, like a restart, like a rebuild. Um and that can't happen in a few months. That can't happen in a year, right? That's a it's a long process. Yeah. Like they're probably barely getting to the point where it's like, this is his team, this is his boys, like his culture. Right. Like barely, you know? And that's four years since I graduated. Yeah. Um but yeah, I mean it's just just what I was in, right? It was just the experience that I had. Mm -hmm. Um but I, I don't take anything away from any of my experience, right? Like I think it was all great, even though at the moment I might have like been upset about certain decisions or coaching decisions. But at the end of the day, dude, like amazing friends I met four years, um, great experiences, got to travel so much, um, places I don't think I'd ever go to if it wasn't for soccer, um, people I don't think I'd ever meet if it wasn't for soccer. Um, so I I don't take it for granted, right? It was I think it was where I was supposed to be, and I think it was the experiences I was supposed to have. That's awesome. Uh, during the preseason, did you ever play for other teams, like semi-pro teams or something? Um, like, what was your th what was your head at? Uh, like no, I I was like, I I didn't really do much of that. I um, I would stay in San Jose a lot. 
Yeah. Like people would leave and play other places and I would stay in San Jose a lot and just train at our facilities. Like I was kind of like still using our gym, like still trying to use our field. Like I was just in the, there in the summer, right? I would just stay there in my apartment. And, and it's all open to any players or? Yeah, to, uh, to the athlete. Yeah, it's like, all the athletes. Um, so San Jose State is a weird setup. So campus and South Campus, which is like the athletic grounds, it's about a mile away from each other. It's not like everything's one big campus. So you have your like educational part of it where you have your classrooms, your dorms, where you go eat, everything. And then you basically have a mile walk, bike ride, whatever it is, um, to get to practice. Mm. And on the South Campus, you have the football field, the locker rooms, soccer fields, uh, softball fields, baseball. So it's like, there's some weird disconnect be- between between that, um, which was interesting in its own right. But mm. I guess because it's a D1 school, they kind of want to maybe. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we weren't we weren't at least where I, when I was there, we weren't like a top top program, right? We were we were struggling for sure. Like I I can't say I was on the top team in the nation or anything, but with playing at that level, we did play a lot of top teams in the nation, right? Yeah. We, we played Stanford every year. Um, UC Santa Barbara was in a preseason every year. Um, a, a lot of good teams. That what was that game like playing UC Santa Barbara? Was it personal? Uh, yeah, it was. And uh, some of my friends still like bring it up to this day, where it's like that was the best game you've ever played, dude. Like, <laughs> like, like, he's like, I, I don't know what it was, but like that's the best game you ever played. And dude, I had like thirty family members in the stands. Dang, like that's awesome. Like posters and everything like it, it was personal to me right it how was does, how does that feel to know that you have those people dude it was awesome especially knowing that i grew up going to these games with them right my aunts my un- cousins my uncles they took me to these games like i watched uc santa barbara play as a kid um to play against them and then my family like being there like it's like a full circle, right? I never thought it would be with a different team, mm-hmm. but it was like a sick, like, you know what I mean? Like, who would have thought, like, yeah. years down the road, we're on the same field that we used to come watch people play. That's awesome. How'd you guys do against them? Uh, we play them every preseason. Um, I, they're I, a good I, team. They are a good team, yeah. But spring preseason games are a little bit different. Yeah. So we both teams probably didn't play their full 90 with their best players right you have to kind of bring in everyone everyone's getting experience everyone's getting minutes so um in that sense it's different but to tell you the score i I honestly don't even remember yeah Yeah, i'm bad about that like i don't you don't remember (laughs) i don't know scores (laughs) damn like i like i'm bad about that all you know is the best game you ever played man yeah right there you go that's all that matters yeah yeah. that's all that matters oh sorry do you want to talk about some of the experiences you had you said you met a lot of cool people playing at um san jose state and Mm -hmm. you you went to a lot of cool places like what are some of the things you did yeah um so who are some of the people you met where did you go what are the places you went to Uh, so our conference was kind of all over the place um a lot of people so it's great traveling it's great being in places but you're not there to hang out, right? It's it's a business trip. Like, that's what our coaches used to always say. Like, you're here for a game. Like, mm-hmm. we're not going out. Like, we're not doing this. Like, it's very structured. It's like, you're going to be at the hotel at this time. You have this much downtime. You must eat at this time, on the field at this time. Like, it's it's structured to, to the hour. Um, so every once in a while, you'd get the occasional, like, you guys have three hours to go explore. And everyone just go do their own thing, which was super cool. But um, we've been to Seattle, which was one of my favorite places. Um, went to Houston. We went to, which a cousin, I think the coolest part about all of it is like seeing people I know go to the games. So mm. like, I mean, it's local. So Stanford, um, I would see, I saw Shell there with his family, which was super cool. That's awesome. Um, I went to play against Sack. I saw Christian Perez and Kia Beth. Like, mm. like we don't talk about it. They just show up, and I'm like, that's so sick. Yeah. Um, I went to Texas. Um, Armando Macias showed up. Okay. Watched me play. Uh, <laughs> I have cousins from Dallas. They watched me play in Houston. Um, where else did we go? We, I mean, we went everywhere, dude. I- Illinois. Um, Nevada, Arizona. That must be so cool to just get on a plane and you go fly somewhere just to play soccer. <laughs> it 
it is cool, but it does get tiring too. Yeah. Like in college soccer, I think the system right now is terrible. Like you're mm-hmm. playing two competitive 90 minute games within three days, right? So the, the college schedule is you play a Friday night game and then you play a Sunday night game. But it's too soon. Too soon. Yeah. And the worst part is they could be in complete different states. Mm-hmm. So like uh, a typical schedule for for one week for us would be um you go to class monday through wednesday you you train monday through wednesday um thursday morning you can't go to class because you're in the airport so say thursday night you're playing against um grand canyon right so you're flying to arizona on thursday you get there thursday you go to the field you do a walk through maybe a little little practice nothing nothing too heavy just to kind of get used to the field go back to your hotel get dinner with the team um you're in bed ready for the game friday right um wake up you get breakfast um any rehab you need need um whatever right you're just kind of focused on the game you go to the field fairly early you get dressed uniform taped whatever you need you play the game um Say you get home Friday night from like nine ten p.m. next sun next Saturday morning, like you're on a plane. You're getting ready to, to go another the next one. game for Sunday. So there's a flight from San Jose to your first game, from your first game to your second game, and then from your second game back to San Jose, and that's three days, right? And um, we got lucky that there was this program. I don't know what they were doing. They were doing like documentaries. Um, and they documented one of our seasons. So we had camera people with us for a full season. Um, and there are, those videos are, are on YouTube. Um, Do you know what it's called? Touch Soccer. Touch Soccer. And so if you put like Touch Soccer San Jose State, they have like a season, like a few episodes of San Jose State. And it starts with like meeting the players. So like we did like player intros to like what it's like to travel, what it's like to be a student. Um, so th- they basically, if you want like a visual of, of what it's like, like, they did a really good job of that mm. yeah we'll link that yeah. dude yeah I mean the interesting thing too is that you guys had night games yeah and like as D1 they have uh, all the best facilities like D2 like we would play noon games because uh, nobody has lights you know yeah. so like luckily for us the way it was set up is if you have a game in NorCal mm-hmm. most likely you're going to be playing uh, East Bay Friday and Sunday too? Friday, su- Sunday but you would be playing East Bay and you'd probably play San Francisco State in the same weekend mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. opposed to flying somewhere else you know like yeah. we can't afford the, the trips yeah no, and it's no. interesting because yours you had like team, like you just mentioned you have teams in other states yeah that's insane it was crazy yeah. like the, does the Pac West do that I know they have Washington uh, I mean not, not the Pac West excuse me the, the Pac 12 uh, I'm sure they all, all do it I mean I, I don't know for sure um, but I know the schedules are set up to where college are playing Friday and Sunday, so I'm sure they they had their own. That's insane. Kinda, right? Yeah. How would you change it? What would you do differently? Make soccer year round. Year round. Yeah. Fall is your preseason, and spring is your conference. You'd play in spring. Why is that? Like you're saying how I would change that? Yeah. No, I'm, I understand that, but like, why would you play like your your conference in the spring as opposed to fall? Because you need to play your pregame, your preseason games first, right? So the way that even though you're in fall, you have like ranking games and preseason games. So even though fall is what counts, before you get to conference, the first few games are preseason games. Then your next games are like division one games that aren't in your conference, but it's for your rankings. Mm -hmm. So rankings is super like a very detailed topic. So it's, For example, Stanford ranked first in the nation. I think won three out of the four years I was in college soccer. They won the national title. Mm -hmm. Um, A tie against Stanford counts more towards your rankings than a loss against, I mean, a win against a bad team. Hmm. Right? So rankings, like, they consider everything when it comes to rankings. So the first part of the fall is that. You play other D1 teams and you try to basically compete with other people that are not in your conference. And then the end of their season is all conference. Mm. So so it's still, even though it's all fall, it's still broken down into kind of like three different kind of games. Yeah, I just realized after asking that is that the academic year starts in the fall. Yes. That's why I didn't, 
I was thinking, I was thinking like the calendar year. <laughs> so I got confused with that. Yeah, yeah. Talk about like the cool experiences that came with being on the team and and the connections you made. Uh, you mentioned earlier off camera about playing against uh, some professional players. Oh yeah, um, talk about that. How it started, how you got the call. Yeah, um, it it wasn't necessarily because like I was a good soccer player and I got the opportunity to play with good players. It was um, so. I don't want to get it wrong, but I think it was the Copa America. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Copa America 2016. Um, they happened to have it here in the, in the Bay Area. and was They had some games at Levi's. So basically whenever there was a game on Levi's, international teams would need places to practice um, and kind of get themselves going for the games. And... For a re- one reason or another, San Jose State was pretty popular choice for a lot of international teams. Um, I think it had to do with our training facility, so our our weight our weight room was right next to the field, mm. um, to where other campuses are really spread out. So Stanford, a great facility, right? But I think they're pretty. It's a pretty long walk between like one thing to another, mm-hmm. and ours is like here's a gym, here's a field. Like literally, you're off the field, you're on in the gym. Um, so I think that had to do with it, but it was a summer. We, we were technically not playing. Um, and like I said, I stayed in San Jose a lot in the summers. So my coach called me and texted our groups and was like, Hey, um, so we are going to get international teams to come, um, use our facilities. Like, do you want to help out? And of course, like, yeah, uh-huh. like, let me think about it. Like, you know, at this point, do you know what teams <laughs> We knew Argentina. Okay. We knew we knew Argentina. Yeah. Oh, that's insane, yeah. Dude. Um so that's the only thing I knew at that point. It was like, dude, we're gonna and the thing is Argentina used it for the whole tournament. Mm. So we had Argentina for like mm-hmm. two weeks for like a long time. And uh, the whole field is gated. So one time you ca- you came to play mm-hmm. you can um so that field that they use that facility. Yeah. Um and the the coaches walk in first, the equipment managers, they start setting up the training and they basically call us over. So it's a group of, I would say about 12 of us. It was about six or seven of us from the men's soccer team. And then there was uh, players from the women's team there as well. And they call us in and are basically like, hey, um, you're here to help. Like you're not a fan. Um, they get fans 24-7. This is a closed practice, no media, right? So sometimes you can have a practice where they still have ESPN or reporters out there. Right. It was a closed practice. So they said, don't talk to them. Don't, don't like... Don't fangirl. Exactly. Just, <laughs> just, just observe, basically. Act like you belong. Yeah. But we were basically assigned different spots around the inside of the fence. So if a, they needed a ball, kick them a ball. Like, very... Easy little basic, yeah, yeah very basic like little jobs here and there um but keep in mind we had them for two weeks so no matter how much like you ignore them or they ignore you like after two weeks of seeing them every day um you kind of start like what's up Di Maria? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? like, like like stuff like that yeah. are, they cool? are they cool too or are they just kind of professional yeah, about it and yeah. talk no to no they're, they're cool dude like i think it's with anything right i think i was starstruck at first but you have nice players, you have friendly players, you have stuck up players. Like it's just like with anything, right? Um, but the first day, um, we're all lined up in our spot. Argentina walks out. And dude, like think of Argentina's roster, like s- just loaded. Mm-hmm. And like you just walk like, oh, dang, that's Di Maria. Oh, that's that's Aguero. That's Higuain. Like, damn, Majorano. Like just one by one, like coming in and you're just like, dude. This is Argentina, like national team. Um, I'm not sure what it was, but I think Messi was going through like, remember those like whole taxes things, like the court. Mm-hmm. He had to get there yeah. late, right? Yeah. So he he didn't he wasn't there the first like few days. Um, and the coaches would always tell us because the equipment guys, we we got pretty cool with with the equipment guy. His name was Maxi, and he would always be like, "Dude, like you don't understand. Like you're starstruck now. Like wait till you see Messi. Like." you're not going to know how to act. Like, it's, it's a different thing. It's like a different, like, like he's a god. Like, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. And this is his own staff, like, talking about it. Um, one of their coaches actually had a messy tattoo. 
Right. Like he had Messi's portrait and like that's oh his coach. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Dude, that's so yeah. insane. Um so I got lucky because I actually got involved with the teams um quite a bit, more than some of my other teammates, because um the goalkeepers, they do a lot of crossing or they need people to shoot on them. Mm-hmm. Um and they would always say, I need a righty and I need a lefty. And I was the only lefty there. Oh, nice. So every day I was shooting on the goalkeepers. Um Do they tell you where to shoot it or you just shoot? No, whatever? like like we do shooting drills sometimes where it's like, I'm going to lay it off and just hit him, just hit him. Or there was times where take a out swinging cross or take a in swinging cross, like from the right side or whatever. Yeah. Um, so I was just kind of feeding them those. Um, and so that was cool. Um, it got to the point where it's like, I was, you were trying to score on them and they would tease you. Like, like, you know what I mean? Like it was pretty cool. So, um, that was overall the, the feeling with Argentina. Um, when Messi finally came, Dude, like, you can't prepare for it. Like, <laughs> like, like he, I got lucky because I was on the side where he trained on his own off to like a corner, and he had like drills and a trainer there with him, and I was like right there, and I was just like watching him train. Like it was something as simple as like cone dribbling, mm-hmm. and I was like, dude, this guy's unreal. Like best player ever in my opinion. Um, and I'm a diehard Madrid fan, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, Messi's the best player ever. Um, and quiet right doesn't talk much doesn't say much um and he just dude goes shoots free kicks all like top corner like so consistent right a a real professional and um one of the days we're helping them pick up at the end and lavesi super nice he was like the most talkative one he would come up to you and like he seems like a jokester yeah he he would come he he would come up to you and be like what's up like what's up and stuff like that and one of the days, Lavesi, uh, Pastore, the goalkeepers, and like a few other players that I can't think of right now, but um, they were kind of coming off of injury. So they needed to play and like ease their way into it. So we played like a little five on five tournament. And I was on a team with Lavesi, Pastore, me, um, and a few of my teammates, and like a goalkeeper of the Argentine team. So, like, I was playing with them. Like, we were actually joined in on the last day. And me and Lavesi started kind of talking. And it was just like, dude, like, we have a good team. Like, we're going to win this little five-on-five, five, whatever. Um, kind of started joking around. And then when we left, we were walking off the field together. Um, keep in mind, the girls' women's team was there too, right? Mm-hmm. The San Jose State. And to them, like, being from Argentina and playing in Europe, like, a lot of people don't understand that that's not huge in other places yet, right? Like, women's soccer, like, like you know what I mean? Like, it's still up and coming. So, Lavesi, like, joking around, he was like, so what, are you guys, like, on a team together? Like, like what, do you, what do you guys do? Like, you guys share a training room? Like, what, what is it? Because they didn't understand the concept of, of college soccer. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Messi was there. So, it was me and my good friend, Jonathan Colunga, um, and Lavesi and Messi. And Messi asked us he was like hey so uh so what do you guys do like where do you play D- dude I, I i didn't say anything i, I froze <laughs> like i was just like what like i didn't say nothing and then my friend jonathan started talking to him and they started having a conversation and talking and we're a college we, we represent this college they represent the women's college and i'm still like Dude, like we're having a conversation with Messi right now. Is this in English or is this in Spanish? Spanish. Okay. Spanish. Okay, I'm making sure. <laughs> Japanese. <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, so still quiet guy, right? So still not like super into it or anything, just kind of asking and curious. And then I was like, okay, like I need to say something, right? Yeah. Like, we need to talk. So we just started the conversation. It kind of was like, hey, so what are your guys' plans? Like, you guys going to see anything around the Bay Area? Um, and then he's like, no, I can't. Like, I'm on a thing. And then we were, like, joking around. I was like, dude, you're, you're messy. Like, yes, you can. Like, you can do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, like no. Like, what, the team won't let him go out? Yeah. Oh. He's like, no, I can't. Like, I'm just going to be in the hotel. Like, we're, we're in a tournament. I was like, dude, you're messy. Like, you can do whatever you like, want. You, yeah. <laughs> really? Like, you want to come hang out with us? Yeah. <laughs> um, so that was it. And then one of the days my head coach called me and was, it's against NCAA to play as a team in the summer. Mm-hmm. So, like. You can't have more than, I think, six players from your college team playing in a college, I mean, in a summer team together. Um, So they made a combo team, like a combination team, between San Jose State and Santa Clara. 
and Colombia national team wanted a scrimmage. So I don't know why or if I was the only one there or whatever. I don't know the reasoning. But the coach called me and was like, do you want to play against Colombia tomorrow instead of coming to Argentina? And I was like, dude, I've been with Argentina for a week and a half now. Like, yeah, I'll go play Colombia now. Um, and that one was we played them. Like, I think two 30-minute halves, like, we played Colombia. Mm-hmm. Like, they, it was their scrimmage game. Um, Santa Clara also had a left back. And he was like, can I have the first half? I was like, sure. And the first half was against the starters. Mm. And then the second half was against the the second team, the reserves. Mm-hmm. So I played when it came to the actual game. I played against the reserves, but I just remember like on the sidelines, like laughing because the first play, the guy that played for me on left back, absolutely like got destroyed by Cuadrado. <laughs> like Cuadrado just completely took him on, and I was like, dude, that could have been me. That like, <laughs> like, yeah. like, like yeah, it could have been worse. Um, dude, he does it to everyone though. Dude, yeah. So, so I was like, okay, I'm okay with that. And then. Since I let him go first half, and then I played second, then they needed someone for set pieces. And we kind of had the conversation again. I honestly don't know this guy's name. He's just a left back from Santa Clara um, that was there. And I was like, hey, you got to play with the starters. Like, can I do set pieces with the starters? And he's like, yeah, go ahead. And dude, it was sick. I was shooting free kicks um, on, on their keepers. James was in the wall. And I would just wait for the coach to be like, okay, go. And like I was shooting free kicks. Why would they have you shoot it? They're practicing. I'm lefty. They're practicing how to defend a free kick. And their players couldn't do it? I don't know. I was Dang, I was hitting free insane, kicks. Bro, bro. Just uh, you gotta do it. That's <laughs> I, I, I was hitting uh, corner kicks. Um I was defending corner kicks. The first one I completely dodged it. Like I was defending this guy and they whipped the ball in. And like their crosses are like both. A shot, yeah, like a powerful shot, Damn. and I didn't expect that. Like I was kind of like, "What are you doing, dude?" So like he sh- shot it first post, like super hard, and instead of like getting behind it and heading it out, like my reaction was like, Category. it came so fast that I was like, Ducky "Wait, cover. like what?" <laughs> and and they like kind of like were like, "Dang!" Like he wasn't expecting that. They kind of like laughed a little bit, and I was like, "Okay, that won't happen again." And uh, so it was like a shock, just like the level of how they do stuff is just so one step quicker like one step faster like they hit the ball harder like it was fun to watch um so we did that and then chile on the last day which was bittersweet because that was the day after they beat mexico 7-0 mm. so you, play, you played against chile or you no they used our facility for like a cool down okay after 7-0 against mexico yeah that so was right after that game literally the day oh. after so Damn. i was just like okay that's tough. That's tough, dude. That, what an experience, man. No, yeah, that's that was insane. Good. Yeah. Well, and what are the te- like? What are the players got to play against Colombia? This is players from college teams around. Yeah, it was a combination. I think it was about five players from San Jose State, about four or five from Santa Clara. Um, there was a few randoms there. I think from like, I think there was a guy from Portland or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, they had to just kind of come up with a with a team that kind of just shadow right, kind of just play with them. Mm-hmm. Um. So I'm not sure. I, I, it was the first time I played with half of those guys. Yeah. Was it competitive at all? Or did it just blow you guys out of the water? I mean, it <laughs> it, it was competitive at times, right? I mean, you, you held your own for certain times of the game. Mm-hmm. And then I think when they want to, like when they kind of were just like, okay, like let's turn it on. Um, they, <laughs> they're obviously clearly better. Yeah. Um, but the levels aren't night and day. No? No. I mean, I don't think so. I think it's a lot of it is just how you approach it, the the, the speed of play and and the details. Yeah. Right. There there were some of my teammates who like took on a few of their players, right? And I was like, that's sick. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you don't think of that when you see Colombia, Argentina play. Like, I could probably take this guy on or this guy, and then you see like my teammate taking them mm-hmm. on. And it's like, it, it they're not perfect, right? They're, they're just humans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Everybody I feel like it's a it's a perception on the outside looking in to think that it's night and day. Yeah. As opposed to like the, the real players. Well, it depends the real who you are though. Right. Yeah. Because it could be night and day. It could. It could. Mm-hmm. It, that, that's actually true. But but then again, like, because you hear that like with, with players like in the USL or the MLS, like when they do play against um, players from Europe, they, they're not like, obviously they're starstruck, 
but they're not like, wow, this guy's way better than me. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So kind of like going, referring back to your point is mm-hmm. that once you do play at that high level, the differences are small. Details. Yeah, yeah, it's details. Mm-hmm. It's, it's the touch. It's the, like you say, the speed of play, yeah. the IQ, the positioning. Like yeah. that's what separates the great players from, yeah, for sure. from just basic players. And and that's the thing with, with soccer, right? I think a reason why I love the sport so much is it could be one thing or another, right? Like you can be such a good soccer player and not be the most physical or strongest or anything and, and be great, right? Messy. Like mm-hmm. you can you can be not big, not strong, and just amazing soccer player, right? A cue off the chain. But you could also be a player that's just a beast, like tall, strong, like, you know what I mean? And that's mm-hmm. what's great about soccer, I think, that there's not one build, there's not one type of player, there's anyone can play. Yeah, right? so universal. So universal. That's always been our beef against, like, basketball and football and stuff. Like, yeah. those are great sports and God-given talent, you know, but if I'm 5'6", like, am I going to make it in the You're NBA? You're never going to have a chance. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you think LeBron would be as successful if he was a 5'7"? He wouldn't have had a chance if he was 5'6", 5'7". Yeah. So, so yeah, that's a very good point. Um, transitioning after college, like, what is... You know, this is like a question I wanted to ask that mm-hmm. it might get a little a little deep, but yeah. what when does that transition from I want to be a professional soccer player kind of start to fade away or that that dream I should ask? Yeah. Um when when you dream of being a professional soccer player, I think you're dreaming of the lifestyle too. Right? So, it's not just like I I want to make a living playing soccer. Right? And and that's the goal. The goal isn't necessarily I want to be a professional player and not have a roof over my head, right? Right. The, the idea is I want to live comfortably and, and have this be a career to where I want to play and make a living out of it. Um, and that's kind of what started switching my my view on, like, do I, do I want to do this? Like, is this realistically a career for me? Like, and... I kind of just came to the realization that I could work my butt off and I can make something out of this um, for the experience, right? I can say, come back to Fort Bragg and, yo, I made it. Like, I'm a professional soccer player. Um, I've I played with players who went first round in the MLS draft, right? And they're not even playing anymore, like two years later, three years later, because it's like, can you make a huge living off soccer in America, right? In the in United States. Um, and that's kind of where I started questioning it. And it, it also, so kind of to give a background on that was when I graduated and as I was leaving college, I, I, I still wanted it. Like I, I was still like, I'm going to play somewhere. Like I'm going to be professional somewhere. Um, I was with one of my college teammates, uh, Kyle Mahoney. Who I also he also graduated with me, and we were both kind of like, dude, we want to play somewhere. So we went to a few like combines, like professional combines, um, and just played. Right, so back to the ID and back to the ID camps and tryouts. It's just like, give me a chance, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and during the process of training and going to combines, um, I also started playing like Sunday league in San Jose, to where it was like just to to keep you active right keep doing stuff um and what ultimately took me away was was i broke my foot so that was the first time i had a long break from soccer right so like i wasn't walking on my legs so obviously i wasn't playing what mm-hmm. happened um it wasn't a tackle or anything right I, I wish i had a cool story for it but i turned to to shoot um or I think I was like kicking the ball up the field. And when I stepped and put my weight on it, I just heard my foot crack. And um, instantly I knew, like, I was like, dang, like, that that was not good. Like, you know, um, and yeah, I went to the ER, um, fractured foot. I got a Jones fracture, which is basically like the fifth metatarsal, the bone that connects the outside of your foot, basically. Um, and I snapped it right in the middle, basically. Um, and the thing with Jones fracture is there's not a lot of blood flow there. So it's like, it didn't swell. It didn't turn purple. It was just like, cause there's not a lot of blood flow. So it's just like a broken bone. Um, and 
at the ER, they told me that it was a different fracture at first and to kind of just stay off of it. So that's what I did. I was just like, okay, I'm just not going to put weight on it. I didn't get any surgery, anything. It was just like, you broke your foot, stay off of it. Um, and then when I went for my checkup, the doctor was just like, who, who told you that it was this fracture? I was like, I, I came to the ER and, and the doctor told me it was this fracture. And then I went to a foot specialist and they said, it wasn't this fracture. It was actually this fracture, Damn. which they said, if they would have seen that from day one, um, I would have got surgery. Like it, like it was a, a fracture that you want to get surgery on. Um, so then I was like, okay, well at this point I was still like, what if I want to keep playing? Like if I still want to make it, what, what's, what do you recommend? Um, and he said, you can, once it's strong enough, you can keep playing. But since you didn't get surgery, there's a high chance that it's going to break again. And, and they said, which is not the worst thing, because then if you break it again, we can do the surgery. Right. And then do it right. And then that was a reasoning right there alone that I was like, do I want to give it all 24-7 train? And you know what I mean? Like, people don't realize it's not, I'm going to go practice for an hour or two and, and make it. Like, my diet, my sleep, like, do I want to commit to this 24-7 to say I'm fortunate enough to get up there again and then that's when it, like, that's when it breaks again and yeah. it's like, Damn. Right okay, down. like, I don't know. And then to not have that financial stability of, like, if I make it, at least I'm settled financially. Like, that's not the case. Like, I know players that played pro um, that, <laughs> trust me, that, that's not the case in, in U.S. soccer. So it was a lot of combination of all that and um, stepping away from it for the first time and just being like, I, I'd rather start trying to figure out what it is I want to do after that. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where I am right now. Yeah, for that. I mean, that's a... It's a hard it, truth. It's a, it's a hard truth, yeah, yeah, that a lot of... a lot. I'm sure you have friends that go through the same thing. You yeah. know, I know a lot of people, myself included, that, that had that low point that mm -hmm. you identify yourself as a student athlete for so long yeah. and you put so much time and effort 100%. like you say you, your entire life yeah. your whole vacation and summer goes to training yeah. and then come back and then when it's all over now what mm -hmm. you know like it it sucks and yeah it's difficult and it it gets better i'll tell you that because yeah. i because i uh it, it's hard it's hard to be positive about it but yeah at the end of the day it's not the end of the world you yeah know? for sure for that's sure. the good thing about it and like i said i mean i I loved my experiences from here, from Fort Bragg to, to Fort Bragg High School soccer was sick. Like I, I loved it. So Yako, um, San Jose State, obviously, like I, I loved all the experiences. It was just, I, I think it was, it was like a, kind of a wake up call to it. Be like, okay, like is this the best for you, like for for your future, for for everything, right? Mm -hmm. And it was just like I, I love the game, dude. I mean, I'm I'm currently still coaching, right? That's what I do. Um, so I, I'm always going to be involved with the game. Mm -hmm. It's just sometimes you kind of got to let it go, right? Yeah. How, how's coaching? How's that? Um, I enjoy it. I, I really do like it. Um, I'm under a very good director right now. Um, so I've been trying to learn off him. And um, he actually came from U.S. National Under-17s. Um, so he was literally coaching UC, I mean, Under-17 um, U.S. team and came over to direct our club. What so, club is it? Uh, Los Gatos. Los Gatos? Yeah, Los Gatos okay. United. Um, and, yeah, at first it was hard to, to separate myself from... from separate, playing. Yeah, player to coach. Yeah. Uh, because I still had the mentality as a player. And that was one of the first things Sean told me. He's like, dude, like, I know it's hard to separate yourself from the game as a player, but, like, now you have to think as a coach. And that's the first time where I was like, okay, like, this is two different things, mm -hmm. right? And... An example of that was if I had kids who struggled with certain things, my mentality as a player was like, dude, like, this is easy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, come on. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, dude, like, it doesn't come easy to everybody, right? Like, that's your point as a coach. Like, how are you going to help them make it easier, develop their skills? Right. So at first I had a hard time with that. Like, I, I, was, I was just like, dude, like, why can't you just be better? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you're not good enough to be here. Go Yeah, on. exactly. Exactly. Stop like, crying. Yeah, well, you're Go cut. <laughs> yeah, like, you're cut. What um, age group? Uh, currently, I'm with 08 and 09 boys. And I have an 08 girls team, too. 
So about 12, 12 to 11 years old. Okay. Mm. Yeah. And I'm more on like the development side of it. Yeah, right I was going to say that's when they're like really developing and, yeah. and getting skill. But even within our own club. So our top 09 team is like one of the best 09 teams, like in the area, like in the nation. Like they go to state, like they're, they're very good. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we have teams like down to first team, second team, third team, like fifth and sixth team. And I work with the lower teams. Mm-hmm. So like last year I had the sixth team. Like I literally had the bottom. Um, so it's obviously different coaching. I'm not going to coach them the same way Sean coaches the top team, right? Because it's just not realistic. Like mm-hmm. I'm trying to teach a player how to pass and they're they're working on tactics, right? They're working on positioning, on positioning and, and everything. Yeah. So so it's different, right? I'm I'm more on that development like can we trap this ball? Can we pass this ball? <laughs> yeah. That must be frustrating then for you. It, it was at first, yeah. And and I think I'm kind of starting to to learn and be like, okay, like I get it. It doesn't come easy to you. Like how can I actually like contribute to your development, right? How yeah. can I actually um, help you? And a lot of it, dude, is just as always and as cliche as it sounds, is making it fun for them. Like I don't want – if a kid is on a six team and – is just there because he's uninterested or whatever and he's just there because his parents signed him up or whatever it's like do i want to set up a boring drill for them or make it a competition like Mm -hmm. you know what i mean can i do a passing drill back and forth okay like keep going or you know what first player to 20 passes in a row like and stuff like that like make it just fun and engaging and um it goes back to that route like why do you play to have fun have fun yeah and and that's what it is and it's it's a learning process. It sounds simple, but you get a lot of different players um, with different personalities. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just kind of taking it by individual, really. Mm-hmm. Is that something awesome. you see doing long term? Um, maybe. And and I'm like really in that transition right now where I kind of testing a lot of different things. Like, what did you I, major in? Communications. Communications. Yeah. Um, I, I think that goes hand in hand with with just playing sports in college, really. I yeah. think a lot of people oh, think yeah. 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 that or kinesiology. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I got a minor in health science. So. Okay. Hey. You, you wouldn't be interested in doing like physical therapy or like going I, I that, was, down that Yeah, route? I was interested in that. And like I said, I love soccer. I love the sport. And I think one way or another, I'm going to be involved in it. So whether that's coaching, um, athletic training or something, I, I think management in a sports team or something i I think i'm going to be involved in it one way or another um even if i find another career that has nothing to do with it uh, i'd probably still coach like part-time um just because i want to be involved in the game but Mm -hmm. um but no right now especially with this year right with crazy 2020 and the virus and everything um i'm just trying to kind of test a lot of waters here and and see see what my calling is or what i want to do um I still don't think I'm ever going to be the person that has one job, like mm-hmm. one career. Um, I think I'm going to kind of... Always be moving. Yeah, try to be in multiple uh, sources. and. I feel that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's definitely hard to settle on, on one thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think one question I wanted to ask you is if you have a kid listen to this who's maybe playing high school ball right mm-hmm. now and who's interested in taking it to the next level, like mm-hmm. what's some advice you have for them going yeah. forward how to how to take their game to the next level yeah it, if we're talking about just game is 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 train right it's it and i mentioned a little bit about it right now is people think training is everything and dude it, it's not going to practice for two hours and then you're going to be the best player like even in college right you're playing with some of the better players in d1 um people stay after practice they stay go before practice like they do things on their own like practice is honestly a small part of it because you have to make sure you're getting good sleep you have to make sure you're eating good diets right you have to make sure you're recovering you got to make sure you're uh academically right you you can't slack academically so it's just being consistent and and being working 24 7 it's not uh okay i'm gonna go train for an hour and i've done enough it's if you really want it you have to stay consistent with it um 
so that would be that sense. And then when it comes to actually just getting the opportunity, um, the opposite of what I did with that Quake story where you just got to be in con, like you got to bug coaches. You, you got to, you got to be at their door. You got to, um, be persistent. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I still think I could have been better even when I played. Like, even when I was at San Jose State, if I was wondering like, like, dang, like I do want to play the next level. What do I do? I should have just gone to the coach. Like, knock on his door. Like, coach, like, what do I need? It's not going to hurt you. Yeah, like, just the worst thing that can happen is they're going to say, like, no, right? Or mm -hmm. But it's like, there's going to always be more opportunities. So I, I just say, be persistent um, and, and work hard, like, around the clock, right? If that's something you want, um, it's a lifestyle. Nice. I think that's great advice. Mm -hmm. Great advice. Work hard and, and be persistent. Because in reality, like you know, no one's going to be out there recruiting you. No mm -hmm. one's going to be knocking on your door, mm -hmm. wanting you to come. Like, yeah. a lot, chances are they probably don't even know who you are. Yeah. Exactly. You got to yeah. let them know who you are. Yeah. 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 In, every, in every facet, an email and calling them, yeah. go, showing up to the practice, like you have to get it. You have to yeah. go and seize the opportunity. You know, like you got to make it happen. Yeah. But, um, and I, I mean, know you guys have mentioned it before. Sorry, I don't mean to. No, you're good. You. Um, like, I know when I was playing, you would reach out to me and other players would reach out to me just kind of asking questions and stuff. Like, I know I've been removed from the game. Like, I still want to be there for other people and especially in this community. So that shouldn't be a hesitation for anyone who is watching and who's interested. Like, I still have connections, I guess, with San Jose State if that's where they want to go or even just showing them around campus or, or something. Um, I'm, I'm all for that. Hell yeah. That's awesome. Dude, yeah. I mean, that, I mean, that's something I probably should have mentioned earlier is, is I mentioned in the first episode how, how you were a pioneer in the area. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. No one else really, I don't think I can think off the top of my head, anyone else that went D1 in this area. Mm hmm I think like the uh, we were talking about it earlier, the percentage that, that of high school players that move on to play NCAA D one for soccer specifically mm -hmm. is like one point five percent. It's ridiculous. So that's n that's like no small peanuts, you know. Yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. huge accomplishment in its own. And I remember when you went to move on. Obviously, the kids coming behind you wanted to do the same, and mm -hmm. I was I think I was the next one mm -hmm. after you. And um, I was very fortunate because I did have the program at Mendocino College that was not there when you, yeah. when you moved on. And that helped a lot. But at the mm -hmm. same time, we'd have games in the Bay Area. You would come watch. You'd give mm -hmm. me advice. You'd tell me how to talk to coaches, what to do, yeah. how to email them. Like, you were a big help to me. Yeah. That, that was awesome. Um, if there I'm is glad anyone, I could help. Yeah, absolutely. If there's anyone out there. Because, uh, again, like you say, that you've had people reach out to you. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's a good feeling to be able to for share sure. that insight. Yeah, for you sure. You know, you, you're a person that has a lot of information, a lot of knowledge. You, you've you been there. You've done that. You, mm -hmm. like, you you have everything behind you, you know? Yeah. So, again, like you just said, if there's anyone listening that wants uh, information, any type of insight, any connections, advice on anything, like, yeah. just reach out to Udi. Um, yeah. But I think we talked about everything, though. But yeah, before man. we finish, do you have any questions for us? Uh, not, not really. I, I know uh, we kind of talked about it, but... I think what you guys are doing is is awesome, right? I think it's it's something that this community needs. Um, I think it's at a good time, right? The 2020 and the craziest things going on, like it, it it's a good listen, right? I've I've been listening to your guys' podcast. I think you guys are doing a good job, and um, I'm just encouraged and, and think you guys are doing a good job and keep going. Hell yeah, man. Thanks, Hell yeah. man. Well, we'll yeah. end it on that note, Woody. Thank you so much for joining yeah, us today, man. Buddy. If anyone has any questions, we'll drop Woody's uh, his Woody's tag right up. here. Yeah. Don't hesitate to reach out. And uh, we'll catch you guys next week. Peace out.